Hi. Um, this chapter we talk about the stock valuation. And we basically are talking about the common stock's valuation and some features of the uh, and the differences between the common and preferred stocks. And we briefly introduce the uh, stock markets. If you want to buy a share of stock, you will receive cash in two ways. The dividend payment, that is not a promise, but possibly being paid by a company. Some companies never pay dividends. Some companies regularly pay dividends. So dividends are a income for the stock investment. The second income can be from the sale of your shares either to another investor in the market or back to the company. If the company, the stock issuer, buys back you, the, the shares that you are holding, the share investors are holding, this is called a repurchase for this company. The company repurchases the stocks that it, it issued before, and you are selling your stocks back to this company, and that that company will make this stock as a treasury stock. Treasury stock. It's like an inventory stock. Okay. So that stock is representing the 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 share of uh, future rights, the dividend payment rights and uh, the the ownership rights for this company. And the shares can be owned directly by the company itself. Some companies, when they repurchase their stocks, they can retire this uh, this stock. So when they retire the stock, the other stock's ownership will proportionally go up. As with the bounce, the price of stock is the present value of these expected cash flows. Suppose you are thinking of purchasing a stock of uh, Moore Oil Inc., which is a company, expected to pay a two dollar dividend in one year. Okay, in one year. So at the end of the next year, uh, at the end of this year. So in one year. And you believe that you can sell the stock for $14 at that time. If you require a return of 20% of investments of this risk, okay, the risk that this company bears, what is the maximum you will like, you, you will be willing to pay? So basically, this question is asking you to calculate the present value of this stock. In one year, what will you receive? Two dollars dividend and fourteen dollars from the sale of this stock. So in total, sixteen dollars. The future value is sixteen dollars, and the interest rate, the required return, is twenty percent. So the present value will be sixteen divided by one point two, which is thirteen point three three. So this is the maximum you would like to pay because it is the market value or the present value of the stock car in uh, at the current on the car uh, at the current moment. Okay. Now, what if you decide to hold the stock for two years? In addition to this dividend, in one year you expect a dividend of two point one dollars in two years. And the stock price of fourteen point seven dollars. Remember, this is the expected price because because you haven't sold this stock, so you never know the the the, the transaction price of this stock. So you expect this uh, stock price of fourteen point seven dollars at the end of year two. Okay, now you have multiple cash flows. You have three cash flows. One, the first one is the two dollars that you receive in one year. So the present value of that will be two divided by one point two, okay, one plus the interest rate of twenty percent. The second cash flow is a dividend. Uh, the, the second dividend of two point one dollars in two years. So the present value will be two point one divided by one point two square. And the third cash flow will be the stock price that you expect to have after selling this price uh, after selling this stock divided by one point two square. And you sum them up the PV will be uh, 13.33. <coughs> Let's then think about the three-period example. 
If you want to hold this stock for three years and another year, in addition to the dividends at the end of the years one and two, you expect to receive a dividend of two point two o five dollars at the end of year three, and the stock price is expected to be fifteen point four three five dollars. Then now, how much would you be willing to pay? The present value will be the the pres the sum of present values of the four cash flows, three dividends, and the final pay the the final sell price. The sell price and the loss of dividend payment will be discounted and calculated as one point two uh, to the power of three. Okay, and the sum of the present values will still be thirteen point three three. This is a coincidence. Okay, um, for. Because this this numbers are designed to make the present values the same, the same. Okay. So you would contribute to push back the year in which you will sell the stock. You will find that the price of stock is really just the present value of all expected future dividends. So how can we estimate all future dividend payments? We have, you know, they're really. Uh, the, there really are a lot of ways to calculate the, the stock price. And if we use uh, multiple cash flows present value this way to calculate it, we have to make some assumptions. Otherwise, in the timeline model, you would assume that, well, in one year, you're going to be paid a dividend D1, and at the end of the next year, you will be paid D2, then D3, D4. If until you, you get the uh, DT and DT plus one and forever. So the the straightforward way of calculating the present value will be just uh, discounting this uh, dividends to calculate its present value, then sum them up, plus the present value of the final sale price of the stock. Uh, but we can s simplify these we can simplify these uh, formulas, these calculations by making some consumptions. For example, constant dividends. If D1 equals D2 equals D3 equals D4, then we know that the we we may simplify these uh, calculations. And if the dividend payment grow at a constant rate, we can also simplify it. What what does this remind you? It reminds you the annuity and, well, actually, it's like perpetuity because the firm will pay a constant or constantly growing dividend forever. Okay, it's like perpetuity and growing perpetuity. If the dividend payment, the, the, the paid dividends are not regular, they're not equal, they're not growing at a constant rate, we call that the supernormal growth. Okay. If it's supernormal growth, then we just use a multi-stage model, which is, uh, simply speaking, is uh, calculating the present value of each dividend that you sum them up. <coughs> Zero growth or constant dividends. If constant dividends are expected at regular intervals forever, then this is a perpetuity, and the present value of expected future dividends can be found using the simply using the perpetuity formula, which is. P0 stands for the present value or the stock price at year zero, okay? Equals D, D is uh, perpetuity's cash flow, constant cash flow, divided by R, okay? We use capital R to know the required return for this, for this stock. So stock price P0 will be D divided by R. Suppose the stock is expected to pay a half a dollar dividend every quarter, every quarter. And the required return is 10% with quarterly compounding. So every quarter, the quarterly return will be, will be 2.5%, okay, 2.5%. Um, in, the, in the below calculation, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.1 is 10% divided by four which is R, and the quarterly dividend is half a dollar, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 divided by 
2.5%, then we can calculate and get the theoretical stock price at $20. If the dividend if the dividends grow at a constant rate, then <coughs> following our the the discounted cash flow model, we know that the P0 will be D1 divided by 1 plus R. D1 is a dividend that is going to pay, be paid at the end of the first year. And D2 is a dividend paid at the end of the second year. D2 divided by 1 plus R squared plus D3 divided by 1 plus R to the power of 3 plus the D4, D5 and until forever. Okay, So for every period T, the present value will be dt divided by 1 plus r to the power of t. We can also rewrite this formula in another way. Or though the we do not assume uh, we do the, we, are, we are not paid d0, but we can assume that d1 is d0 times 1 plus g, which is we, we create a number d0, which is d1 divided by 1 plus g, or d2 divided by 1 plus g square, or dt divided by 1 plus g to the power of t. So d0 is kind of like the base for the, and the starting point for this constantly growing dividend series. So we can rewrite this model as D's, uh, p0 equals uh, d0 times 1 plus g to the power um, divided by 1 plus r and uh, plus the other item that you, you're going to see from this uh, you're, you're seeing from this uh, from this formula so every item is d0 times 1 plus g to the power of t divided by 1 plus r to the power of t so with a little algebra and some serious work this reduces to the following formula but how do we get this? Let me show you how, how do we get this. So we have shown this multiple times in the slides of annuity and perpetuity and also in the bonds uh, pricing formula. So we multiply both sides by 1 plus R over 1 plus G. So every item of this formula will be multiplied by 1 plus r to the, uh, over 1 plus g. So the first item will be reduced to d0. The second one will be reduced to d0 times 1 plus g over 1 plus r. And until the teeth item, the teeth item w was originally d0 times 1 plus g to the power of t divided by 1 plus r to the power of t. After multiplying it with 1 plus r over 1 plus g is reduced to d0 times 1 plus g to the power of t minus, wait, uh, should be minus 1, okay, minus uh, t minus 1 over 1 plus r to the power of t minus 1, okay. And to infinity, forever. Then we find that after multiplying both sides of equation 1 by 1 plus r over 1 plus g, the difference between equation 1 and equation 2 on the right hand side is only d0 because magically all of the other items, they are the same. Okay, this is one trick of infinity. Okay, this is very classical. So we use a second second equation is both sides to minus the first equation is both sides we can get p0 times r minus g over 1 plus g equals d0 then we rearrange it a little bit then we can get what we have the, the equations that we have from the previous slide and that is p0 is equal to d0 times 1 plus g over r minus g equals d1 over r minus g. This is called the dividend growth model. Okay. 
suppose the company Big D Inc. just to pay the dividend of half a dollar per share. See that I have emphasized, I have highlighted the word just. Whenever the question is asking you just to pay the dividend, it means that the dividend is D0. Okay. If it's D1, it's going to say this company is going to pay a dividend of half a dollar in one year. That's D1. So now, half a dollar is D0. It's expected to increase its dividend by 2% per year. So G is equal to 2%. If the market requires a return of 15% on assets of this risk, that means R is 15%. So how much would the stock be selling for? And this question is asking you to calculate the present value of this stock, which is equal to D0, which is half a dollar, times 1 plus G, 1 plus 2%, divided by R minus G, which is $3.92. Second question. Suppose uh, TB Pirates Inc. is expected to pay a $2 dividend in one year. So this $2 is D1. If the dividend is expected to grow at 5% per year and the required return is 20%, then D1 is 2, G is 5%, R is 20%. From the equation, you know that the P, the present value, will be D1 divided by required return R minus gross rate G, okay, 5%. And you get the price at 13.33. So why isn't the two dollars in the numerator multiplied by 1.05? Because we say that this two dollars is going to be paid in one year, so it's D1. If we say it's just paid, it just paid $2, that means 2 is D0. In that case, we will multiply it by 1 plus G. <coughs> Stock price sensitivity to dividend growth G. When G is going up, when G increases, the stock price will increase exponentially. Okay, exponentially. When R is going up, the stock price will sharply go down at first, and then slowly go down. I, I, I'm not sure whether I can call this exponentially, maybe uh, it's an inverse log, I don't know. Okay, but uh, it, it sharply goes down at first, then slowly, and the, the, the the, the rate of going down is uh, is getting smaller when R is going up. You take an example of Golden Gross Company, and this company is expected to pay a dividend of four dollars next period. So D one is four, and dividends are expected to grow at six percent per year. So which is G. The required return R is sixteen percent. What is the current price? So. 4 D1 divided by R 16% minus G 6% equals $40. Remember that we already have the dividend expected next year, so we don't multiply the dividend by 1 plus G. What is the price expected to be in four year in year four? Okay. In year four. The P4 will be D4 times 1 plus G to over R minus G. Remember that not only P0 equals D0 times 1 plus G over R minus G, actually PT is equal to DT times 1 plus G over R minus G. So P4 is just can be simplified as D5 over R minus G. And what is D5? Because D0 is, D0 
zero uh, is four divided by one plus g, and d one is four. So d five is equal to d one times one plus g to the power of four. Okay, and divide that. We divide that by r minus g, which is fifty point five. What is the implied return given the change in price during the four-year period? What is the implied return <coughs> if if the if the change in price during uh, given the change in the price? So the the price was forty percent now, okay, from the last slide, and the price in for year four will be fifty point five, so fifty four point five is a future value, and forty percent forty dollars are present value. So present value times one plus return R. So we use return to avoid confusion with uh, capital R in the in the dividend growth model. But one plus return to the power of four. So we can. Calculate and get that return will be six percent. Okay, so the price is assumed to grow at the same rate as dividends. Okay. And this example is as uh, I'm leaving this example as practicing the tutorial and also this one. And there was a quick quiz. So how do you use a DGM to find R? Uh, just rearrange this formula, DGM, uh, dividend gross model, a little bit. Then you can find that R is equal to D0 times 1 plus G over P0, which is the current price. The, right now, the, 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 this year's present value of, uh, of, of, uh, of stock price plus G. Okay? And because D0 times 1 plus G is equal to D1, so we can also rearrange it as D1 divided by P0 plus G. Suppose the firm stock is selling for $10.5. Okay, $10.5. What is, which is P0. It's just to pay the one dollar dividend so d0 is one and dividends are expected to grow at five percent so g is five percent what is the required return you just plug these three numbers into this formula then you can find that the r is uh 15 percent what is the dividend yield okay dividend yield the current yield is the return, the, the, the benefit that you are getting divided by the price that you are paying for. So it's a pure return rate for the fixed income investment. The money that you paid for is $10.5. And what you get is $1. Well, $1 times 1 plus G because uh, it should be in one year, and uh, the dividend yield is ten percent. Okay, is ten percent, and G is five percent. Uh, G is also called a capital gains yield because whenever dividend is growing at the constant rate G. Remember what we have from the previous slide. The stock price is assumed to grow at the same rate as the dividends. So that the stock price, theoretically, will also grow at the same rate G. And that is, that is the capital gains. The return is the capital gains yield. yield. And the dividend is kind of like the coupon payment for bonds. This is a fixed income part of this return uh, but it's not called fixed income because it's actually in, in, in reality it's not fixed here we hypothetically assume that this dividend will be constantly growing so we assume two things first the the the, the company will pay dividends second the dividends will be paid regularly 
in a, at a growing rate. Both hypotheses may not be true, and far from reality.、Um, actually, a lot of firms they don't pay dividends, and a lot of firms, even though they announce that they could pay dividends,、uh, they probably will miss their their promise.、Uh, they, they they won't keep them if their financial financial condition is getting worse.、Uh, more and more. Companies current days are using another way to、uh, to give their shareholders returns, which is share repurchase. So there is a large literature in academia talking about why、uh, repurchase is stock repurchase. That is, the company repurchase the the, comp- the stock that they issued before. Why stock e- repurchase is preferred and more and more popular compared to dividend payments. Okay. Um, so there are many reasons. Part of the reasons could be、uh, dividend is kind of like a、uh, kind of like a commitment. It's not mandatory. It's not、uh, legally binding. But once you regularly paid for two three years, if you suddenly stop paying dividends, the shareholders will be very angry, and they probably think like, why why don't you pay dividends? Like is your financial Condition getting some problem, so it's basically giving the company management team a pressure. While、well, stock repurchase wouldn't have this problem, there were some other reasons. For example, the capital gains yields、um, and dividends yield they they both have taxes, and the tax rates could be、uh, changing. And、uh, for repurchase, the tax、uh, could be the tax rate could be lower compared to the dividend payments.、Uh, there were also some other reasons. If you are interested, you can you can、uh, you can read a bunch of authors.、Um, for example, Michael Weisbach,、um, Michael Weisbach at the、uh, uh, OSU Ohio State University. Like that professor wrote some、uh, papers, very very good papers, and、uh, some other authors' papers、uh, discussing the differences of.、Uh, Uh, paying dividends and、uh, and repurchasing the stocks, both dividend payments and stock repurchases are called payout policies. Payout policies. Firms have several ways to spend money. Okay, so in corporate finance, okay, I'm a, I'm digressing a little bit. So firms basically have four ways to spend money. There are some other ways, but mainly four ways to spend money.、Uh, Besides hoarding cash, okay, when firms earn money, they can hoard cash. But there are four ways to spend money. First, investment. So investment is saying like you know building plants,、uh, factories,、uh, buying equipment, hiring more people, like this.、Um, the second way is to do the 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 payout policies to return the benefit, the cash to the shareholders, the owners of this company. Through stock repurchase or paying dividends, the third way is to return to its own employees. Usually, usually it's not very common, especially now, because company, according to the Anglo-Saxon mindset, like this, this the, the 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 ideology, like the the company's goal is to maximize the 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 shareholders' benefits, but It, before 1990s,、uh, even in the U.S. and a lot of、uh, Anglo-Saxon culture influenced the co-、uh, societies, there were a lot of unions.、So、the unions unionized workers and helped them to、uh, to to fight for the benefits. So the so the firms will、uh, will will distribute some cash and benefits to the employees. In face of this pressure, the fourth way is to to return some benefits to the stakeholders. For example, the、uh, do some environmental protection, uh, like uh, like the the air pollution equipment, the pollution abatement equipment、uh, improvement, or To do some to donate the money to the to the poor area, 
or to help the neighborhood, or this, these are called CSR activities, corporate social responsibilities. Okay, corporate social responsibilities. So in total, there are basically four ways to spend money other than hoarding cash. And dividend payment and uh, and and stock repurchases are one of them. Payout policies. And here we are talking about the dividend payment. Stock valuation using multiples. Another common valuation approach is to multiply the benchmark PE ratio by earnings per share to come up with the stock price. Okay, uh, what is the earnings per share? It's uh, Net income, if you learn accounting before, I, I guess you learned that, but we were gonna do a review of accounting later. Um, the earnings per share is a net income from the income statement. You know that the, the, the company financial statements have three main statements balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement. And for the income statement, in the last row, you will have the in a net income and net income divided by the number of outstanding shares you get the EPS okay the EPS you knows for every share that the investor is holding how much money how much profit that you are getting okay after tax and after interest payments after a lot of things and what is a PE ratio uh, PE ratio is price earnings ratio it is a stock price divided by EPS. So, by definition, PE ratio is stock price divided by EPS. So, PE ratio multiplied multiplies EPS will be stock price. Okay. Uh, PE ratio is a industry average. The, the benchmark PE ratio is often a industry average or based on a company's own historical values. And also, some people can use the, uh, the, the price price sales ratio. For PE ratio, I have some other things to say. Uh, PE ratio on average in the U.S. market is about like fifteen percent. Why fifteen percent? Because this PE ratio is stock price divided by earnings per share. Okay. So still remember the. How we calculate the dividend yield and the capital gains yield, especially the dividend yield. Dividend yield is like I buy this stock at the at this price, and I get the dividend one dollar. So the the yield is one dollar divided by the stock price I'm paying for. So for the PE ratio is a stock price divided by EPS. If you revert it, then it's the EPS divided by stock price. What is EPS divided by stock price? It is a return for holding this stock. Right? So for every share of price, uh, every share of stock, you pay the stock price. You pay the stock price. This is your investment. And how much money does it give you? How, what, what is the profit this company is giving you for holding this one stock, for buying this one stock? It's EPS. So EPS divided by stock price is almost about 6% on average. So that's why the average of PE ratio would be 1 over 6%, which is, two, which is uh, 15, which is 15, okay. For high, ta high tech um, firms, technology firms, uh, the PE ratio are PE ratios are usually very high. The reason is that they are, compared to the earnings, people prefer buying the stocks. Or though these stocks investment does not give direct benefits in the short time. For example, you, you, you buy the stock for $100, but this year it only gives you $1. But the investors don't care. Like the investors say, I'm buying this stock not just for one dollar I'm earning today. I'm looking at this stock and I think it can be the next Google, next Alibaba, next Tencent, next Amazon. 
So maybe this this company can grow become、uh, the next giant. And at that time, it may have monopoly power. Maybe like a billion people will use it. And at that time, my stock will give me a lot of return. So I don't care. So right. So if 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 the investor, a lot of investor think like, although this company doesn't make money now, but it has potential to make a lot of money in the future, then the PE ratio would be very high. Suppose the company has earnings per share (EPS) of three dollars over the past year. The industry average PE ratio is twelve. Using this information to value this company's stock price, which is simply industry average PE multiplying EPS, and we get thirty six thirty six dollars. So we have some、uh, summary of the stock valuation. Uh, this is a general case.、Uh, we have the、um, we have the every period's dividend payments, and we discount them into the present value, and we sum up sum them up. And for the constant growth rate, we have the present value as d one divided by r minus u, or which is also、uh, d zero times one plus g over r minus u. And this is non constant growth. And then the the we we didn't talk about it, but this is super normal,、um, gross dividend, and、um, the last one is the stock selling, or the the market price of the stock at period T. Okay. There were some features of common stocks. The first is voting rights. Holding the stock is not only like holding the bonds. Holding the bonds, you only have the right to receive money in the future. By holding stocks, you also have the right to vote. Okay, the representation of democracy in a company, but it's not a democracy by count, like by head count. It's democracy by money. If you have more than fifty-one percent stocks of a company,、uh, others won't vote because what do you say? Will be the will be the final will be the final、uh, the final conclusion. So voting rights, proxy voting. Some people,、oh, but by the way, vote for what? The shareholder conference will vote for the board of directors. Okay, usually the very large shareholders. Will designate some shareholder, oh,、uh, some some board directors, and the board di- board of directors, the board of directors will hire a group of management people, such as CEO, CFO, COO, C whatever O, to manage this company. Proxy voting. If you cannot go there to go to the conference to vote, you can. Assign someone to be your proxy to vote for you. Okay, there is a big database called ISS, Institutional Shareholder. This is last S.、Uh, I anyway, the the database is ISS. It's a proxy voting database、uh, for whatever for a lot of companies.、Uh, for each voting,、uh, it, it proxies. Is customers to vote for the customers. Classes of stocks. There was no class of st- different class of stocks、uh, until recently. In the recent one or two decades,、um, some companies invented.、Uh, I-, I could be wrong. Maybe the the different classes of stocks、uh, exist have existed for a long time. But recently, it has been more and more popular, especially among the high tech companies. <clears throat> so one company could have A class stock or B class stock. Okay, the two different stocks classes have different voting rights. They have the same right. So, for example, one A class stock and one B class stock. When the company has profit and pay dividends, or when the company is being sold, and 
you have the right to have some assets after liquidation. These two stocks can have the same right to receive money. But about management, when the two shareholders go to vote, the, the two stocks holders are different. In some companies, for example, if you hold the A class stock, if you hold one stock, one share, and you vote, it's equivalent to a shareholder with 10 B stocks to vote. So for A class stock, one shareholder will have 10 voting rights. For the B stockholder, B stockholder, if he if he owns one B share, he only has one voting right. So why why do we have this? Because the high tech companies uh, uh, during their their growth, they usually have a lot of VCs, venture capitals that we talked about them before. They have the venture capitals and the private equity firms to invest in them, giving them a lot of money. For example, like a hundred million dollars. And but but the uh, the founders do not want to give up their control of this company because to them the companies could like their babies. So they 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 spend like ten years in this company and they want to see the company the, they want to see the companies uh, go where they want them to, want the company to go. So they they would like to give up the financial benefit to the VCs and PEs the institutional investor, but they don't want to give their control, give up their control. So they will hold the, for example, A share. They have 10 or even 50 or even 100 voting rights and give the institutional investors B shares so that uh, so that uh, the 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 founders will not lose their control over their company. There are other different classes of stocks. For example, for some companies, one stock can be sold at 10 times price of the second stock from the B stock. Okay, uh, you can go online and search for different classes of stocks. Uh, they, uh, they usually, they represent the same financial benefits but different political power. There were some other rights for common stocks. Uh, for example, in, uh, when dividends are being paid, the shareholders will distribute this dividend proportionally by their shareholding uh, proportion. And they also div uh, distribute, divide the, the, the company assets during the company liquidation and uh, the after the bankruptcy. Preemptive rights. <clears throat> so when the company is deciding to issue new stocks, the existing stockholders will have the priority to purchase the newly issued stocks. For example, a company is deciding to issue 20% more stocks to attract more equity, more money to grow itself. For the existing owners of this company, they have the priority. If they offer the same price, and if they want to buy these stocks, and the outsiders, previously not the owners of this company, the, the non-shareholders of this company want to buy the newly issued stocks, the existing shareholders have the right. To buy them first. Okay. There are also some other rights. <coughs> dividend characteristics. <coughs> Dividends are not a liability of the firm until a dividend has been declared by the board. Okay. So when it's announced, usually it's going to be paid. Consequently, a firm cannot go bankrupt for not declaring the dividends. If I don't say I'm going to give you money, I won't give you money. Okay. Dividends and taxes. Dividend payments are not a expense. It's a return to the shareholders. So they're not tax deductible. They will be taxed. 
there is a special kind of stock called preferred stock. For dividends, the stated dividend must be paid before dividends that can be paid to common shareholders. For the preferred stock holders, the, their dividends must be paid before the common shareholders. So preferred stocks and common stocks. We were talking about the common stocks. Okay. Preferred stocks are a stock with a senior, more senior rank. So their preferred stocks kind of like between the common stock and the bond. It's less senior than bond, but more senior than the common stocks. They have the right to receive the dividend before the common stockholders receiving the dividends. And uh, and uh, but the preferred stockholders do not have the right to vote. Okay, they don't have the right to vote. They give up the political rights for more senior financial benefits. Um, preferred stocks, preferred dividends can also be deferred indefinitely, uh, but once they are, once they are. Once they are announced, they have to be paid, and most of the preferred dividends are cumulative. So, if a, if a company is having very bad financial condition, it, it may miss some payment of the preferred dividends, but they have to be paid before they pay the other common stock dividends. Okay, usually the preferred stocks can be viewed as a perpetuity; they're relatively stable and they can be paid forever if the company exists um, and uh, and they are usually regular okay in the contract when you buy the preferred stocks and so for for many firms they declare uh, the board will declare they're 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 gonna regularly pay the, the dividends but they can be missed or delayed Reading stock quotes. So this is stock quotes. I this is a screenshot that I got from uh, Yahoo Finance. Okay. So what information is provided in the stock quotes? So for this corporation, you have the corporation name. It's listed in the stock exchange, Nasdaq. GS is global selected. Nasdaq has several. Nasdaq is not just the one stock exchange. It's several exchanges. It, it was an OTC structure. Now it's an exchange. It has global selected, uh, uh, the, the global market, and uh, capital markets. And the corporation, uh, Nasdaq is also a corporation. The corporation also has, uh, if I remember right, the pink sheet okay, for junk bonds, the high high risk bonds. High risk. Uh, well, people, more people call it high yield bonds because high yield is like high return. You know, it's the same as high risk because high risk, high return. But it's nicer to call it high return or high yield bond rather than high yield stock rather than call it high risk stock. Okay. Anyway, so this is a stock exchange that uh, I got listed on, and this is a stock ticker. Because when people buy this stock, they don't type in, they don't report the whole company name, they report the ticker. Okay. Costco's ticker is cost. So it indicates that the price is a real time price, and the current transaction, the most recent transaction price is 72.07, and it was lower than before. And here is the the, the color denotes that it was a decline, so it's uh, 0 0.76 percent lower. It's uh, it's uh, this is the most updated uh, transaction price, and this is the last trade price and trading time and change and previously previous day's closing price. So every day they have a, a market open hours. So uh, you cannot trade 24 hours. So when the market closed, this is a closed price. 
and this is today's open market open price, and this is bid price and ask price. We explaining this these two concepts a little bit in the bond slides, the bond lecture, and this is daily range, fifty two week price range, trading volume, okay, and the average trading volume of the past three months. Market capitalization. Some people, uh, a lot of people, call it market cap. Okay, whenever you hear market cap, it's a market value of this corporation. It's equal to, prox approximately equal to, uh, the number of outstanding, the number of total shares multiplying the market share price. And this is uh, P/E ratio, price earnings ratio. It's a stock price divided by EPS. TTM is twelve trading months. That means from today in the last twelve month. In the last twelve month, uh, the average P/E ratio. Why is that? Because the earnings per share is not reported every day. It's reported usually every quarter. Okay. And EPS and dividend and yield. And you can also go to Bloomberg and Google Finance and other platforms to look for the stock quotes. Here's some quick quiz for your practice in the tutorial. And uh, here's a comprehensive problem that you're gonna they're gonna review in the tutorial. Okay, this is a this is the end. This is the end of the stock valuation. I hope you enjoy this lecture. I'll see you next time.